Cersei the Sorceress is building an army of evil magic to make herself the most powerful sorceress in the known world. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Justice League Dark issue number 15 and find out. Alrighty then, so picking up from where the last issue left off, the majority of the Justice League Dark team is on their way back from dealing with that vampire threat in Romania. They realize there's something rather weird with the sky. A strange otherworldly type of eclipse which ends up just being the absolute tip of the iceberg as Wonder Woman shows shows up to get everyone else up to speed on what she's been doing involving strange dreams involving Zatara and the prophecy that she might very well bring about the end of the world. Oops. Also, hey, remember that last big crossover event we had involving the witch marked and all of that stuff? You know how we just kind of left that to blow over? Well, now it's coming back to bite us in the ass. Cersei has stolen the power of the witch marked for herself and plans to use it to reorganize the world of magic, especially now as it is in such a malleable state state following the fall of the Lords of Order. And, well, it just wouldn't be a paranormal horror-type story if the heroes didn't get together only to realize, you know what, well, we should split up again. Worked for Scooby-Doo, am I right? Wonder Woman, Zatanna, and Kent Nelson go deep under the Hall of Justice to the secret hidden weapons vault where we discover the heroes have actually been keeping their piece of the Eclipso diamond this whole time. Diana hopes that if her teammates can pull off some sort of magical ritual, she can be transported to the higher ground of the Witch Marked and hopefully cut Cersei off from her power source. Now while all of that is going on, Cersei has sent her minions in Injustice League Dark to go and strike deals with other powerful magical deities all over the universe. You got Papa Midnight and the Floronic Man trying to cut a deal with the Parliament of Flowers, the inheritors of the Parliament of Trees job in Guarding the Green. Luckily Swamp Thing's already there too. But what neither the good guys or bad guys could have pieced together in this scenario is that despite their rather chill name, the Parliament of Flowers doesn't exactly like anyone. For all of his trouble, poor Swamp Thing literally ends up coming undone, which is terrible for him because with no Parliament of Trees to resurrect him, once he dies, he dies for good. His final words, though, are for his team to hunt down Abigail Arcane, his on-again, off-again Lady Love, and also the inheritor of the power of the rot. Of course, it's going to take a while for the good guys to get rolling with that plan, as they still have to deal with Kirk Langstrom, the man bad. He had been seemingly possessed or otherwise influenced by Claire and the Witch Boy at the end of the previous issue, and now he's really getting in touch with his body horror roots going full reanimator and shooting himself up with a weird serum that makes him more than just a man-bat, it makes him a man-bat monster with multiple heads. Again, the new and compelling ways this book can disgust you, am I right? Oh, but that's not all Injustice League Dark has planned for our heroes, for you see, Grundy and Clary and the Witch Boy have taken a trip to the Necropolis, where they seek an audience with the literal embodiment of death itself. Because, I mean, really, once you get the grimmest of Reapers on your side, there's pretty much nothing you can't do, am I right? Now, eventually, Diana gets her wish and wakes up somewhere in the witch-marked realm. There, she finds one of the other characters from the past story arc who tells her, Yeah, hey, it's great you're here, only you're late. Cersei beat you here and now wants to turn this place into your grave as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Justice League Darkish number 15, everybody. And overall, while I did enjoy the story, I couldn't help but feel it was a little all over the place. I guess it is clever for James Tynan to create Justice League Dark's evil counterpart, but not just have the good guys and bad guys all meet up in a field and punch each other because, well, that's just not what this book is about, isn't it? The Injustice League Dark plans to beat the heroes not by beating them in straight-up combat, but by undermining their very control over the magical world. Points to for continuity in reminding that, yeah, probably after the events of Justice League vs. Suicide Squad, the League would have wanted to put the Eclipso Diamond somewhere safe where it couldn't hurt anybody. In summation, I'm really liking all these different side plots that are going on. I just wish we had more time to spend with each one individually, which is why I can really only give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. Kate Jewel again, and today I come to you with some really good news. For the second year running, I will be a guest at the London, Ontario Comic Con. Yes, that's right. You can come out and see me. I will be hosting a panel on the Saturday about comic books and superhero movies. That should be really fun. Really excited about that. And then on the Sunday... I will be leading a panel, a kind of Q&A session for myself and a famous Superman cover artist. Ooh, that should be fun too. So yeah, there's still a chance to get tickets. I will link all the information down in the description. I will have merch, brand new merch that you can buy from me 
there. You can also go to my T Public store, which is down in the description, and pick up some stuff there if you are so interested, in case you can't meet me there. And again, that's the London, Ontario Comic Con, not the London, England Comic Con. I know it goes on basically the same weekend and the same weekend as New York Comic Con. This created a lot of confusion last year, so don't be confused if you're in the greater Toronto area, just in Ontario in general. Make a day of it. Come out and see me. I love to meet the fans, and I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.